Shalom, everyone. This is Mike Sutcliffe, your online ministries pastor here at Corner Fringe Ministries. And thank you for joining me today as we continue to count the Omer together in 2023. Today is week four, day 26, and we're going to look at Psalm 19, verses 1 through 7. And honestly, I took a bunch of notes on this one. So I hope I can be concise. I hope that I can reveal something that is going to be a blessing to you. And even as we go through it one more time, that it will be clear. That is ultimately what I'm hoping for, clarity in God's word. Let's take a look at this. Read with me in Psalm 19 that says, For the choir director, a psalm of David. The heavens are telling of the glory of God, and their expanse is declaring the work of his hands. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their utterances to the end of the earth. He has placed a tent for the sun, which is a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. It rejoices as a strong man to run his course. It's rising from one end of the heavens and its circuit to the other end of them. And there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. You know, this word heavens is used in two places or in two different ways. First, the physical. When I walk out my door and I see the stars in the, in the night, that's the heavens. This, the, the, there is a spiritual. It is the place where God resides. It's his throne room. You know, I think about when I was a little kid uh, and I lived in, in a little town in Illinois, uh, Streamwood, where at night I would go across the street to this hill and I would climb to the top of the hill and I would lay on my back in the grass and I would look up at the stars and I would just be in awe. That is the picture that I get here when I read this, that the heavens are telling the glory of God. Because the word glory here is kavod and it means the weight, importance, and honor. In the, in the Bible, the glory of God is often associated with divine appearances or revelations, such as the cloud that led the Israelites through the wilderness and the fire that descended upon Mount Sinai, or maybe the radiant vision of God seen by the prophet Isaiah. The glory of God is also closely uh, linked to the temple in Jerusalem, which was seen as a physical manifestation of God's presence on the earth. So when I see this picture here, that this that the heavens are declaring the glory of God, they are telling me, they are giving witness and testimony to just how incredibly large and unsearchable our God is. You know, when I laid on that hill, I remember looking at stars and then looking past stars and the fainter ones and wondering, even as a child, if there was something beyond that. That somehow needs to be restored in how I view God. It's not that I can read his Bible and understand everything about him. It's not possible. My mind is not capable of understanding that. And when I realize that, I have a greater reverence or appreciation for who God is. I love that it says that the expanse is declaring the work of his hands. Day to day pours, pours forth speech and night to night reveals knowledge. This is a, a picture of just how incredibly just un, just majestic and in, just our God is, right? You ever think about that and you start to think, we serve a God that is so big and so incredible that he, that nature in its own form is declaring his glory. They're giving witness and testimony to him. And I think there's something here about the, the importance of nature. Often when I think about it, I think if nature was not obedient, what would that do to you and I? Think about if the sun did not burn at the temperature that God commanded it to, or that the moon moved uh, closer than the than, than God tells it to be affixed. If those things were to take place, life as you and I know it would not be able to exist. So the obedience of everything in, the, in our solar system, every planet, every star, every meteorite, the obedience of each of these objects gives glory to the authority and the power of God. He talks about this word, this, uh, ah, this is such a beautiful picture. And I want you to think about it as I read through it one more time. Uh, he has placed a tent for the sun, which is a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. You know, I think about this here. Um, this word uh, 
um, tent is it's a sukkah. It's like a, um, or a hoopah. It's a booth or a shelter. And when we come into the fall feasts, we start to celebrate Sukkot, which is the temporary dwelling, the, the festival where we, where we long and we remember this is a temporary dwelling here. And one day we will eternally reside with our bridegroom. And so when I read this, I start to think prophetically of, of the days that are lying ahead of us. You know, this, um, this passage, when we talk about uh, um, the, the idea of the bridegroom and, and what it draws to my mind is really little, uh, it connects to a day of judgment. Because even if you read just the verse before it, their line has gone throughout the earth and their utterances to the end of the world. This talks about a line of judgment. And so when I connect these two together, that the bridegroom is coming out of his chamber, that is the day of judgment. When you look at Joel chapter 2, you could read through that, and it'll, it'll tell you point blank what that will look like. It starts to get a little scary, right? There's, there's a, a thing, couple of thoughts I want to close on quickly here as we end up here. Is that it's this idea of perfect, right? God says here in, psalm, in this psalm that the law of the Lord is perfect. Now, it's got a purpose. It restores the soul. It's the testimony of the Lord as sure, and it makes the wise simple. The law of the Lord is perfect. Now, it made me think of, obviously, for those of us who, who study Torah, it makes me think of uh, Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 and 18 that say, Do not presume that I came to abolish the law or the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. And that word there is perfect. For I true, for truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke of a letter shall pass from the law, until all is accomplished. It, to me, it's a connection to this psalm that we're reading today, this uh, Psalm 19, because it takes us to a place of connecting that the the heavens and the earth are declaring the testimony of God, and perfect is something that is different than what you and I think. So let's take a look first. The word for testimony is edut, and uh, it refers to a covenantal relationship between God and his people and the teachings and the commandments that God has given them as a guide for living. The word testimony emphasizes the idea that these teachings are not guidelines or suggestions, but rather a solemn witness to God's authority and the expectations he has for his people. So if you and I are not obedient to God, if we are in rebellion to God, what kind of a witness are we giving to God for the people around us? And with this in mind, the phrase, the testimony of the Lord is making the wise simple, can be understood to mean that God's teachings have the power to simplify and clarify even the most complex issues, issues and to bring wisdom to those who seek to understand them. I think the opposite of that is also true. Those who think they're, they're wise, this, work, this book will make them feel simple. It will humble us when we read the Word of God. So when I read this, and I read this particular passage from Psalm 19, 1 through 7, it ends with the idea that, um, that God, His law is perfect. And we know that because we look all around at His creation. It is a revelation of God's character and His nature, and it, text, it testifies morning, noon, and night without stopping to the power and authority of God. And so I think it's interesting to me that the psalmist begins with creation and he takes it all the way to you and I. And the testimony that you and I should have if we put our faith and obedience in the Lord. If we trust the word of God. If we obey all of God's commandments, all of his Torah, as if Yeshua were our Torah teacher. Not the ways of men, not the traditions of the church, but as Yeshua has revealed God's word to us. You know, that's made available to each of us. And that's why he says that it makes the wise simple. You and I, it, he, we can seek him in his word today. We can open up the Bible. We can study the word for ourselves. And even some of the most challenging passages here can be understood if we earnestly seek God in prayer and ask him to reveal himself. I promise you that he wants to offer that to you. Well, friends, we're going to end it there today. And I hope that as you uh, continue to study the word for yourself, that you would begin to prepare your hearts to be free to worship on May 28th with us at Corner Fringe Ministries. And uh, in, as we continue to grow together and walk along this journey, tomorrow will be uh, week 
4, and we're going to be in day 27. We're going to look at Psalm 25, verses 4 through 10. And I hope that this has been a blessing to you because it certainly has been to me. Until tomorrow, everyone. Shalom.